Well, hello there. It's another session. We're on the river again. Let's see how we get on. So, uh, roll that intro. <laughs> I've just got the four rods set in. I have a half mackerel, a smelt, a perch, and a sardine dead bits. All fishing either on the bottom or popped up off the bottom. We're on the River Urn. It is surprisingly a lot lower than it was the last time I was here. There's no weeds touching wood, there's no real weed traffic. Something just t tickled my sardine. Ooh. Anyway, no real weed, which is good. And I've already had a fish, so it's not a blank. I'm going to show you that now in a minute, but it's just chilling out in the uh, in the waist and the, the retaining sling. Not big fish by any means, but. It, it means today is the blank. So, let's get that fish out and have a look at it. Let's get it put back. And then I think it's a cup of coffee time because... I haven't had a cup of coffee yet. A man needs coffee, otherwise he goes to sleep. I actually could do with Irish coffee, but that's not much good when I have to drive home. It's just a day session today. Mrs. S is working tonight, so I have to go home. But I fish here, have some fun. I'm not I'm not by myself today. I'm the responsible adult is Steve. He's doing some course fishing and a couple of pegs down there. So I am not unsupervised. I know some of you worry about that. So Let's get this little fish out. I want to show you there's like a lump on its jaw. I don't know if it's angular damage or if it's just something it's been born with, but I'll bring it out and I'll show you it now. And then I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. Let's get on. Not a very big fish, but a nice little fish to catch all the same. Maybe six or seven pound. I'm going to take a photograph of its, uh, of its jaw because its jaw is kind of damaged. Where's my camera? There's my. Again, she's healthy enough. She's healthy enough. So let's just turn you around, sweetheart. Come on, lie down, behave. Just gonna put back. Meanwhile, right. Let's get the left hand rod. Some juice. This is just sardine stuff. This is Eddie Turner sardine oil.
standard ledger rig. Let's get some some oil into it. Stay. Right. See with oils and injecting them, you've got to be so careful not to stick your hand with it. Oh, so the last thing you want is your hand stuck with. A hypodermic full of oil that's going to suck and we don't have to fish a million miles here we just have to get right there that's what's on the bottom and then the flow of the river is going this way Right, mackerel tail, ready to rock and roll. That's the little smelt that's already had one pike on it, so give it another 20, 20 minutes maybe, up to 45 minutes and I'll change it out, thinking a nice trout on that there. But the river's very slowly moving this direction. If you go down there, that's where the marina is, Balnadek Marina. Uh, you've seen me fish here a bunch of times. I quite like this area. It's a beautiful fucking day. Normally when I'm here the wind's ripping me to bits and the the uh the rain's battering you. So we'll have a nice day, just a little bit of wind. I'm going to do a review, a long-term review of my uh my wellies. The, the Grubs Vibram Soul Wellies, but that'll be in another video. They are, uh, it's coming up to, well, it's bound to have been over a year since I bought them. Uh, going on, like, like how the boots have performed, all of that's good stuff. It's, it's just a case of do a wee. I've got asked a couple of times how the boots fared out, and it'll be a a wee review on how the boots have have fared out over the the abuse that they've been given. I'll also do a review on my uh, Pro Logic landing net. It didn't do the best, if I'm honest. The quick adapters are all broken. The plastic tops that go on the, the top, the corners, they've all broken. And I've had to change the mesh because the mesh that was originally on it went to shit. And the wee cap that's on the bottom of the handle, we still button cap, it's not there no more, it fell out. So, not really some, not really positive if I'm honest. You know, I find myself going back to an old leader landing net that you know I bought when I was a teenager 
you know the arms are the arms are still working perfectly. I mean, okay, they'll land the, the mesh. You swap the mesh out because the mesh gets fucked up and torn. You end up buying more mesh. But that mess never let me down, and it's took a kicking. Whereas the, this Pro Logic one, the bear in mind, it was expensive. It wasn't cheap. It's uh, it's been disappointing now, if I'm honest. This is why I don't take stuff for free from angling companies. Because if it's shit, then I want to be able to stand up and say, it's shit. You know, if I spend my money on a product and it is shit, then I can turn around and say, avoid said product, it is shit. One fish stopped. Steve's catching roach, so none of us are blanking. Always a good day when we're not blanking. Quite enjoy this. Yes, like I've said to you guys a, a few times about fishing the river. If there's if the urn's gonna produce a big fish, the river is the place to be. I mean yes, the upper side and the lower has the potential. The lower has the potential to be the best fishery in Europe, hands down, if it was left alone. You know, the, 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 the commercial anglers are allowed to take 25 tonnes of pike out of the lower every year. You know, so 25 tonnes, it doesn't... Uh, make your fishery very healthy when you're taking 25 tons of an apex predator out of it. But the people in charge of the fishery, you know, there's... I, I don't know if it's ignorance, incompetence, but I ain't going to go into that. You all know how I think about what I think about commercial angling, especially on inland water. I kind of thought the uh, the sardine would have went because they do love a sardine here. So far, it's only been the smelt that's worked. Everything's been well souped up with different oils and potions and stuff. You know, I am a massive fan of oiling my bits. Massive fan of oiling my bits. I. Even so much, like not of so much like the oils, but colour in them as well. I think because if a fish is, if a fish sees the same thing over and over and over and over again, something different will get its attention. So, something different's always good. I am a massive fan of Eddie Turner's oils. You know they're. They are awesome. I mean, all my oils live in this bag because if they spill, they stay in the bag and there's less chance of fish oil floating around my bag or the back of my van. Oh, oh we might be away. Ah, come on. Right. Okay. Yes, we're in. Feels a better tight and fish. That's a better fish. Right, 
That's a better fish. Oh, I might actually weigh this one. Yeah, I think I'll uh, weigh that one. Let's get the hooks out and let's get this one. took that but hmm right let's get the let's get the hooks out of you son right, there's one have to go in through the the gills here calm down calm down She's just tore, she's just tore herself a wee bit. Right. Right, I'm going to actually, I'm going to weigh her. Right, let's see what it weighs. I'd say that's 14 pound. I would say that's 14 pound on the nail. I've just waited. And it is 14 pounds on the nail. So let's have a little look see. Come on. Come on, calm down. Fourteen pounds on the nail. It's got a bit of a bit of a damaged jaw but apart from that she's a lovely clean clean fish. Beautiful river learn pike. Let's get her put let's get her put back now. Oh, let's take a picture here. Let's get her put back in, shall we? Oh, you're going the wrong way. Come on. You're You're going there. <laughs> Come on, fish. You're going there. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> oh, there you go. Fourteen pound. Coffee. One hour later. So there we have it. Number two fish of the session. It's been quite productive. 
little jack on a smelt and a mid double on a half mackerel. Cheers. Oh. So how's all you guys out there on, in YouTube land? I get a lot of messages, I know I keep saying this, I get a lot of messages and I feel bad that, you know, maybe I missed some comments. I don't do it deliberately guys. I I try to reply to every comment that I get. Uh, but again, it, it, I have a full time job, baby. Wife, like a life outside of angling, so I was trying to div try to manage my time the best way possible, I guess. You know, I love coming out fishing, but at the end of the day, this is this is my my hobby that takes away the stress and the bullshit that's in my head. You know, I got asked a few times, you know, uh, would I take people out guiding? Uh, that's not for me, you know. Don't get me wrong, if, if somebody wants to do a day's angling, I'll do a day's angling with them, you know, I'm not going to take money off you. If it comes to it where, where it's like somebody that's a novice that's not really understood the game, just needs a bit of help and hand, I'm happy for you to say, look, on this place, we'll turn up at this occasion, this date, this time, um, you know, we can fish. But I'm not an angling guide. I, I just thought that's not me. And I do try to remember people when they're asking for like, like a shout out. I do try to re remember. I am very, very grateful for everyone that watches these, these, uh, these vlogs, even if it is. You know, me talking shit 99% of the time and 1% of the time there's a bit of information in there that you can get and help your fishing. The one top tip I will happily share with anybody is get yourself an old plastic box. This is an old, old tackle box. I don't even think this company's alive anymore. Manura. Manure tackle. I bought this when I was like 12 and originally had, it had like a little drawer and it had loads of little uh, floats, little little floats this sort of size. They were Italian so I mean it was like on sale in the shop and I thought oh I could always use floats. Well, over time the floats kind of disappeared but I always kind of held on to the box and it's a good job simply because you can hold all your your needles for injecting your bait. You do not want this stuck in you. You don't want this stuck in you because if it's going to get stuck in you then Sod's Law is it's going to inject all this crap into you and you don't want that. It's going to fucking hurt. It's a, it's a trip to A&E and then some. You know I'm a great believer in using oils to attract, to attract pike. Uh, but if you're going to do it you, you got to think of the safety aspect because getting one of those big bore needles stuck in you it's going to fucking suck then you got the trip to A&E then possible hospitalisation because if you've injected it and maybe there's air in it you possibly give yourself an embolism that's really really serious that's potential to step on the door and knock on the door and shaking hands with the Grim Reaper stuff so you got to be safe with them that little plastic box ensures that there's no needles anywhere other than that little plastic box. So that's my safety top tip today. You know, just in case anyone's out there using them to kind of fling at each other in the bank for a laugh. Don't do that. That's silly. Oh, I'm not going to fish very long. You know, I don't even know what, what, what time it is. Hold on. Right, that's just gone 10 past 3. I'll probably stay at about 4, half 4. 
and then take a drive home. I've got to get home, the wife's working tonight, so I've got to look after the monster. The monster headbutted me yesterday. I picked her up and I was holding her in my arms. And she leant back as nice as you like, and then went bosh and got me right above the eye. And I was kind of, I'll be honest with you, I was kind of dazed. I was like, what the fuck? And then just as this, uh, the eyes are beginning to open again, she gave me a, a fucking left hook that you wouldn't believe right in the other eye. My wife found this hilarious. I was there saying to her, you know, take the baby. You know, I'm going to have to tap out. I've got, like, going dizzy here. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that my daughter's not going to be one of these, you know, confused, limp-wristed types. <laughs> I had a visit during the middle of the week from a TV licensed man. I'm going to play that clip for you and let you uh, see how I handle the TV licensed man. I will give you a bit of... Uh, bit of a backstory beforehand I was in but I was there was me and the wife we put the baby down we were just kind of watching you know shit TV and having something to eat having dinner uh, it was about 20 to, it was about it was about eight o'clock so this guy knocked the door about eight o'clock and the wife went up to get it and I could hear the conversation from where I was and it was the conversation started off as uh, oh is this not mrs. mrs. Jones house and and my wife's like, what? Oh, Mrs. Jones used to live here at 33 and blah, 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 blah. And my wife's like, no, no, there's no Mrs. Jones here. And then a few more wee questions, a few more wee questions, a few more wee questions. And something in the back of my head went, wait a fucking minute. Why is this randomer that nobody knows at the front of my door interrogating my wife? He, at no point I showed any identification as to who he was. And I clicked when I heard the conversation switch to, so do you own a TV? And at that point I was at the front door kind of asking him, you know, identify yourself. Tell me who the fuck you are. At eight o'clock at night, standing outside my front door questioning my wife. And as soon as he produced the card TV license man, he was told to relocate himself off of my property, post haste. On, um, what do you call it? Oops, something's who, just... Who are you? Oh. How are you? Who are you? My name's Keith. I'm from, TV from, license. Get the fuck. Okay. I don't like the BBC. I think the BBC TV license is theft. In an age where everyone's struggling to fucking put food on the table and keep gas in their house and keep oil in their house and keep their houses warm, these parasites are out there trying to screw over random people because they don't subscribe to their propaganda and bullshit. I can kind of ignore the BBC and its whole Jimmy Savile cover-up. It irks me that they knew Jimmy Savile was a sex predator and he was predatory on Wayne's kids babies, children. It disgusts me. It makes my fucking skin crawl that the BBC covered that up for decades. It was an open secret for decades. That irks me. But what really boils my piss at the minute is this cheerleading for a, an ISIS bride that went across to Syria and bragged about watching beheadings of fucking people by ISIS. I thought it was hilarious. And now she's stuck in a third world shithole. She's realizing I may have made a fucking mistake here. I want to get back to the UK. And for some reason, I do not understand the BBC is running a cheerleading service to bring back this bastard. The only way this bastard should ever be brought back to the UK, and I'll be very honest here, the only way this fucker should ever have come back to the UK is to be put against the wall and given two in the chest and one in the face. I have zero tolerance for terrorism. I grew up in Northern Ireland 
in the 80s and 90s where fucking terrorism was a bad thing. You got to see it real fucking close. So I have developed over the years a, a, a genuine loathing and zero tolerance for terrorism. Just the same as if, you, if you're if you cheerleading for them, if you're out there celebrating them, and then I kind of class you as a human being that I don't really want to associate with. I think that you're a bit of a dickhead, a scumbag. But that's, that's why I don't like the BBC and I refuse to pay a TV licence. You know, you don't have to. Don't be bullied into thinking you have to pay a TV licence. If you don't watch live television and you don't watch the BBC, you don't have to pay a TV licence. I have no idea why the... Uh, the useless government we have hasn't just already abolished the TV license. It keeps talking about it. And you, of course you have like the Guardian Easter readers, you know, with their limp wrists and their Prosecco going, Oh, well no, the BBC is important because it provides shit that we like. Meanwhile, the rest of us that's struggling to put food on the table are going, um, Well, how's about no? You know, we're tired of being made feel the enemy here because we're straight white people. We're tired of being told that we're the fault of everything that's gone wrong in society. But... I'm not going to get into a rant. I'm having a good day. I've had two fish, one of them's a double. I'm going to go home tonight and have a Chinese takeaway. We have a rather excellent takeaway, not where I live. You know, the... The head, the head chef is a guy from Hong Kong, or he's a her family's originally from Hong Kong. When the when the, uh, the the years ago, Hong Kong used to be like a British island, and in like the early nineties, ninety one, ninety two, they handed it back to China. But because this guy was like a, a businessman and he'd kind of upset the communists, he got like a, a chance to come to the UK, and. I don't know why, but he ended up settling in Oma. So he's a chef in a Chinese restaurant, or he owns a Chinese restaurant. And that's a pretty, it's a pretty damn good Chinese restaurant. So tonight's plan is go home, edit this vlog, eat the Chinese takeaway, wrestle with an insane, almost two year old. My wife's also talking about having another child. Can you see them? You see the grey hairs? You see them kind of pumping out? So I've been trying to distract her with pictures of puppies. Because I could handle a dog. I would love another, I would love a little Springer Spaniel. Even a Doberman again, I would have another Doberman. I grew up with Springer Spaniels, they are awesome little dogs. You know, perfect fishing dogs. Doberman's not so much, not so much a fishing dog. They just tend to be goofy big bastards that just want to play all the time. They're just, <laughs> they're so maligned. When we had Lily, you know, she was just a goofball, a big daft goofball. And you're there saying to people, you know, look, the dog's not going to eat you. It's a Doberman. Yes, it's a Doberman. It's not going to eat you. You know, it will fucking rip your arm off if you touch my wife. But that's kind of why Doberman. If you're going to touch my wife, you better pray the dog gets to you before I get to you. Because the dog will hurt less than me. And then suddenly said to me, you know, this plan could kind of could kind of go the other way, Scobes. And I was like, how, how, how could it go the other way? They said, well, your wife could have another baby and you could have got a puppy. So you could have had, like, child under two, pregnant, hormonal, angry wife, and a puppy. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a recipe for chaos. Anyway, I'm gonna get a cup of coffee because I need one. I need one. But yeah, two fish, one being a double. Good times. Okay, we have another run. Still something there. Let's have a set the hooks. And we're in. This is on the sardine. That's a nice jack. Right, let's get it in the net, shall we? That isn't the bad one. Shut up, bite alarm. That's a nice wee jerk. Right. Okay, you'd have to tangle up the hooks, wouldn't you? Come on, come on. Let's get you on the This is why I like the unhooking mat and hooking griddle. Because she can roll around and she isn't gonna do herself any while she's put that hook into her. Come on, calm down. She's a lively one. Lively one. Come on, out of there. Not very big. A couple of pound. Right, let's just get you put back, sunshine. Just gonna use the land in it to put her back. I'm not gonna or put him back at the back. Not that I'm going gender neutral, I'm not one of those freaks. I just want to get the fish. Come on, you. <laughs> oh, see, here's the problem when you nick the gills. They bleed a fair bit. So let's get it back in the water without fucking around with it. Just then. Woohoo! 
Number four fish. If I can land it, it is. Ah, uh, this is a small little jug. And it looks like it's been a bit abused. No, mate, this is a jack. It looks like she's been bad abused. I think I can see the broken jaw. Yeah, she's not been treated right, mate. number four. Unfortunately this one's been badly damaged. The jaws actually split away from the split away from the cartilage that holds the I'm not sure if it's, it's eaten, it's healthy enough, it's fat enough. Let's just just put it back in and see where it goes. There it goes, poor Hanlon. That shall was Gilrakers tore out of it and everything. Poor thing. So there we have it, the end of another day. Been a productive day on the river, four pike. Although that last one was a bit fucked up. Somebody had uh, removed the hooks aggressively and tore out Gilrakers and so I do not know if that pike's got long left. It kind of poses the old moral dilemma, you know, do you knock it on the head or do you put it back and hope for the best? Or You know, either way, because it's only a small fish, you know, it'll get, if, it, if, it, if it goes to the bottom, it'll get it. Something will eat it, you know, so it's not going to be a... Uh, that mong. Just do a U-turn in the middle of the fucking road. Pardon my language. For mana people. Anyways, that fish there might not survive, but it's back in the water. If it dies, then a bigger pike will eat it. So it won't get, uh, it won't go to waste, put it that way. Steve managed to get a spot. He managed to get quite a few roach actually on the, on the Wagler float. He was doing quite well, had a good time. But it's now uh, half past five and I told Mrs. S that I would be leaving at five and I'm only just leaving now. So I'm... I am waiting for an angry phone call. Because Mrs. S has to go to work tonight. Oh well, these things happen, you just have to get through in a skillet. Fucking mad place. Loads of people that don't understand what indicators are for. Oh. Anyway. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you haven't already, then please give it a bash. That probably sounds back to front. 
if you are a subscriber to the channel big thumbs up if you're not then come on do me a favor i'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers i'm nearly there do a man a solid and do me a favor if you do like the content to put out then feel free to uh to share it to your social medias to share it among your friends you know again i do try to answer all the comments i get honestly i do i i if I have a, if I've forgot to answer them or I've missed a comment, you know, I ain't doing it deliberately. I haven't got like some sort of thing against you. It's just been missed. So if I've missed your comment, then I apologize. But like, you, you kind of have to take into account that that I'm a that I'm just a normal guy that does this as a bit of a laugh. This isn't a full time job or anything like this. Scaling people. Anyway, until the next time, troops, tight lines.